Did you see that sunset last night? It was spectacular. The western and southern sky was aflame in a, in a color similar to the darker of the carnations there on either side of the altar. It was beautiful. I almost missed it. I was sitting at my desk, busily at work at home, and I hear Kate running around the house. Finally, she finds me in the office, sitting at my desk, and she says, look outside at this sunset. And I got up and I looked, and it was beautiful, spectacular. What's funny is, in my office, at my desk, the windows are of a southern and western exposure. And the drapes weren't drawn, the curtains weren't pulled, the windows were wide open. And it was right in front of me. And I didn't notice, and I would have missed it had Kate not found me and pointed it out to me. Now, did you also notice about what time the sun set yesterday? Around five o'clock, which is a depressingly early hour for the sun to set. And not that you would know it this morning, but do you know what time the sun rose this morning? According to the weather app on my phone, about eight o'clock. That's a depressingly late time in the day for the sun to rise. It is, my friends, a dark and gloomy time of year. It's not just gloomy because of the lack of daylight and this morning's thick clouds and dense fog. It can be gloomy this time of year for a number of reasons. News of no end of foolishness happening in City, Fa City Hall and Lansing and Washington. My office phone ringing off the hook this time of year more so than others as heating bills are coming due and Christmas is happening. Can you help with the bill? Can you help with Christmas? Can you help with food? In many of our own lives this time of year, we set up for ourselves unreasonable expectations of what Christmas should be like. And so often we fall short of our own expectations. We disappoint ourselves, others disappoint us. And for many in this congregation, there will be an empty chair at the Christmas table. The sad realities of life and death. can be, it is, a gloomy time of the year. And Advent comes in the darkest time of the year. The winter solstice is just around the corner. It's hard to see John the Baptist on this Gaudate Sunday, a Latin word that tells us to rejoice, to be joyful. This is a joy-filled Sunday. It's hard to see John the Baptist, that brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath that is to come. It is hard to see John as a prophet of joy. And I must admit, in my fondness for John the Baptist, Sometimes I have a hard time being a prophet of joy as well. There is so much that is troubling around us that it's easy to get caught up in that, caught up in our own miseries and disappointment and gloominess, and certainly to get caught up in that of our loved ones and friends and of the world. And yet I'll argue today that John the Baptist, in his own sneaky sort of way, is a prophet of joy. 
Because John wakes us up. People coming out to him, you brood of vipers, that grabs our attention. That tells us that something is important is going to happen. And then John calls us into a right relationship with God. And John calls us into a right relationship with each other. Bear fruit worthy of repentance, worthy of a changed mind, worthy of a new attitude, worthy of Christ. Remember whose you are. Simply claiming that you are a child of Abraham is not good enough. God can raise up children of Abraham from these stones. Remember that you belong to God. Do not take that gift for granted. If you have more than you need, get rid of some of it. Coats or food or anything else. Not just a call for charity, but also a call for justice. Because the more that we have means the less that someone else has. Don't cheat. Don't defraud. Don't intimidate. Don't bully. These are all hard things to hear, but If we choose to live into them, they can bring us great joy because we know that we are living with the mind of Christ. We are living in the mind of the one who brings light to the world, whose birth we await in this darkest time of year. When we live in right relationship with God and with one another, it brings us joy because we can then see the joy in the eyes and in the faces of those who we meet, those who we love, those who we care for. And yet it can be hard, it can be hard to do that. It can be easy to miss out. Which is why we need John the Baptists in our lives. We need people who will point out that good news is coming, that good news is here, that there is beauty and justice and truth in the world. We need people who point out to us gorgeous sunsets in the midst of a gloomy day. Someone who searches us out throughout our houses, the houses where we live or the houses of our hearts, and says, look up from what you're doing. There is beauty outside. You will miss it if you don't stop and look. And then, in that moment, in that moment of finding joy in the beauty of God's creation, or in the moment of finding joy in a smile or a hug or a show of support from a loved one or a friend who picks you up when your heart is broken and life is at your worst, those moments of joy, if we pay attention, can wake us up to look for another moment of joy, and then the next moment of joy, and the one after that, and the one after that, until we can live into that exhortation that Paul has for us to rejoice in the Lord always and in all things, because even in the midst of a gloomy month with far too early sunsets and far too late sunrises, we are blessed that God's presence is with us always, And we are blessed to wait with eager anticipation the coming of the one who saves us. Rejoice. Amen.